And this is Imai Chapolsky where he did the study where he glued accelerometers uh, to the fingernails and he realized that the vibration transmission into a molded grip is less. So what we've done is we're no longer relying on viscoelastic elastic material to, to have damping absorb the vibration. Now we've isolated. He's relaxed his grip so the thing can vibrate all at once. So we've had entered into a new mode. Again, the new paradigm. I, won't, I know I'm running out of time here, so I just want to show you real quickly. Thinking in 4D means you need to think with time. You need to think how the heat goes into the grip and you have cross-linking properties and how you mold and also the evolution of grip design with each driver because you constantly are remolding it until you find the sweet spot, the perfect one. You have to learn how to get the information and then you have to train the drivers. Oval racing, completely different than road racing. Believe it or not, a lot of the stress on a guy who's turning left is to hold the car to the right while he's going down the straightaways. So you would think you wing it heavily for the left for leverage. No, you have to wing it also to the right because of the stagger. Because look, when these guys get to the end of the straightaway, they want to set the car in. Remember the water drop? So as he sets it down, what he does is he releases the tension in the steering. And then the car settles and then the force is built. Obviously with shifters and the attachment, the temperatures, the cross-linking, all this stuff is important. Micro-adjusting, this is the stuff that driver's not even aware of. And GoPro cameras are a godsend for me because now the guy says, oh no, I don't move my hands. Let me see the GoPro footage. I'll show you, you are. Macro-adjusting is the shuffle steering, how you move, you're not gonna wing that one. And this one is big for the OEMs. Ingress and egress, out off the steering wheel to the controls. Because what you've got, each cockpit is different. The plane of the wheel, where the controls are, the shifters and so forth. When, you, when you're now empowered with the ability to add ergonomic character to the steering wheel, you start adding ridges and flanges and flutes and so forth. Each cockpit is different, so you, re, you, re, you design the steering wheel differently. Gloves, inseam, outseam, SFI says that now the gloves have to be 75, or sorry, 70% flame proof in total area. Dual durometer we talked about, split mu could be uh, either part leather, part persona grip, or different surface characteristics. I have certain things I can't talk about. I have patent pending on safety features, but I had to throw that out there because there, there are things you need to do. Vibration we just talked about. These are the surface uh, techniques. The flocking is embedding things. Again, trying to change the stick slip. Polishing for NHRA and World Land Speed Records. These guys want to be locked to that steering wheel when they're going through the quarter mile or to the top speed doing 450 miles an hour. <coughs> Design elements, wings, flutes, flashes. We can talk about that afterwards. These are examples of a polished wheel versus a textured 